So, let us go back to our uh, previous example. Okay. So, the first step that you might want to understand is you want to allocate factors. So, we just now we saw that how to allocate factors, but remember in this particular example we are only interested in A hyphen B only A cross B interactions we are interested in. So, what they are saying I will take A in column 1 B in column 2. So, A cross B will be in column 3 then C then D this is as per the linear graph. So, these two we will call it as dummy let me not draw a line. Okay. So, these guys are dummy meaning they will exist, but they do not mean anything. Okay. So, what does this mean? What is the meaning of these guys? So, it says A takes a level of 0, B takes a level of 0, C takes a level of 0 and D takes a level of 0. So, let us take this guy for instance. A takes a level of 0, B takes a level of 1, C takes a level of 1 and D takes a level of 0 this is what it is. So, what was A temperature 200 degree 220 degree? So, 0 means what temperature of 200 degree I am fixing it, B is the pressure B 1 factor uh, the second level B 1 is 700. So, 700 degree. So, I am fixing it at 220 degree centigrade 700 uh, kilogram centimeter squared for the uh, pressure. Then C is C 1. So, the time is for 40 minutes and D is D naught which is 3 percent additive. I am doing and I am getting a response of 15 units kilogram per centimeter squared in terms of the tensile strength. Similarly, each one of this each one of the row is a different experiment. So, for each experiment I am getting different results. So, once you get these results what is it that you can do? There are multiple things that I can do. One is the moment we have already discussed the moment you have more than one realization which means it is not deterministic or it could be a result of multiple things. We will look for the mean. So, you can ask T mu what is the mean value then you can ask for T sigma. So, this is for across the experiments. Okay. This only tells you what are the limits, bounds, what is the average of the experiments that you have done. But what we are usually interested in is we are interested in the variation across the same experiment. So, if you take this particular experiment where A is fixed at level 0, B is fixed at level 0, C is fixed at level 1 and D is fixed at level 1. If I repeat the same experiment multiple times the next time I might get 11.5 the third time I might get 14. So, you can do as many experiments uh, as many repetitions as you want for this particular experimental setup. Then for each row I might want to find the mu and standard deviation. Then I might want to like that I will find for each of the rows mu 1 sigma 1 mu 2 sigma 2 mu 3 sigma 3 then I will have to find out which of them gives you the maximum mu and minimum sigma 1. So, there is something called an S n ratio right. So, what does it tell you signal to noise. So, it is mu squared by sigma squared. So, if sigma is large which means the noise is large then this value is less you actually want a better value of SNR meaning the mean is also max is more the sigma is less when the sigma is less then your SNR is going to be large. So, mu squared by sigma squared is what you are looking at in this particular case, but there are also other types of SNR depending on what your uh, quality characteristic is. Okay. There is something called an ANOVA which is out of scope for this particular course ANOVA stands for analysis of variance. ANOVA. Hmm? So, this ANOVA has its roots from the 
statistics and interestingly what it says is like it takes your responses and as the name suggests it decomposes the variance into the different factors that are involved. What are the factors that are involved A, B, A cross B, C, D in this particular example. Then there are ways in which you will be able to find out there is something called an F statistic it will tell you which one is more important and stuff like that. Okay. So, this is just to give you an idea. So, I am going back to uh, our triangular tables and sometimes what happens is you take an example of 2 raised to 4. As we saw in the previous example, it was said that there were three fact uh, there are three factors and two levels uh, sorry uh, there were four factors and two levels, but only one two factor interaction was important. So, it was okay. you can just still survive with the L 8. Okay. So, in this particular case if you had four factors and two levels there are 16 experiments that you need to do. So, obviously, I will do an L 16 but I cannot afford L16, I can run only L8. So, now you are coming to the real problem. If I have ok. So, if you have the different combinations that we are talking about. You want to now select which of these factors because you cannot have the privilege of having all the factors. So, the idea in selecting is very simple what is it that you are going to knock down you have to compromise what is it that you are going to compromise. So, instead of 16 which is the case in this you want only 8. So, select 8 out of this 16 that is a basic question, but it is not that difficult what you knock down is you knock down from the more number of interactions. Okay. So, for instance you knock this guy obviously, these three guys also will be knocked down. Now, the other one is 1 2 this you cannot do because main factor you need for sure then 2 factor interaction then what is of importance 3 factor then 4 factor interactions. Okay. So, in this sense if you see these will account for 4 then here are 6. So, in total 10 but I can have only 8. So, this 4 I cannot compromise this 4 I need to have otherwise there is no point. So, 4 plus 4 out of this 6 out of this 6 I can take only 4 which 4 can I take and how do I how am I going to take. If you say which 4 to answer that question you need to have some additional information just like the previous example someone comes and says anything that is got to do with a interaction is important then ok 3 even then you will be left with 1 what to do you can treat it as a dummy only. But let us say that you do not have any information on which one factor is important ok you do not know whether A is important B is important or C is important and their corresponding interactions are important. Please understand one factor by itself might not be important, but that factor in an interaction with another factor could be important. So, you will have to be careful about that part. So, in this case let us pretend that you have no information on the interaction. In such a case what will you do how will you deal or how will you choose the rows or the, the number of experiments appropriately. What you could actually do is, is something called confounding what we are trying to do is, is you can confound the main effects with the interaction effects what does that mean. So, let us say I have A and I have C then I have if I put C here ok if I put C here what will happen is I will get only sorry A B ok I will only get A B A C B C right, but A B 
B C you will not get anything with respect to B D because D will be here. So, is there a way to deal with this? Yes, there is a way where you can combine these stuff. So, we will see what that combining is, but before that this is the one that I spoke about. For instance, A was here, B was here, C was here. So, this is B cross C. Now, I am going to combine one main factor and one interaction to give me A cross B cross C in 7. Get the point? Or I can do B cross B cross A cross C that is also equivalent to A cross B, but if you look at it 2 5 will give you 7, 1 6 will give you 7. So, here instead of saying D I can have A cross B cross C provided I do not have the fourth quantity that will give me the full factorial experiment. Now, what I am doing I am actually removing this A cross B cross C and I am putting my D there that is what what happens if you need to add another factor. So, this is your full factorial experiment this is called resolution 4 that part we will talk next ok A B A cross B C A cross C B cross C A B C. Now, there is also another way of looking at this one is instead of this A cross B I am actually putting D. So, let us put D I will use a red color it is much better ok. I put D. So, what does if I have that then column 1 has A and column D has 7. So, column 6 should have A cross D. Then I have C and A cross C ok or I can also have B cross D right. So, B is in 2, 5, D is in 7. So, B cross D will be in 5. Then I can do A cross B cross D. So, 3 so, A cross B is in 3 and then D is in 7. So, 4 will have A cross B cross D. So, you can keep building and that is how this second part of this resolution 2 is built. So, what is the meaning of having 2 layers? So, what you are going to do is, is you are going to confound you are going to combine these guys. Oh, man you are going to combine these guys. So, what it happens is what it means is you do not know whether it is A cross B or C cross D or A cross C or B cross D. You will run it and let us say your analysis says this column number 5 is important. If it says then you do not know whether it is a A C combination or a B D combination. In that case you will have to do additional experiments to identify whether. So, let us say that uh, out of all the experiment it will tell you only column 5 was important. So, you save experiments in column 3, you save col experiments in column 6 yeah. So, this is what it is a rewritten stuff ok. Confounded two factor interactions and analytically this is impossible to select the uh, to separate the interaction effects ok. So, this is one way in which you can include one more factor into an existing orthogonal array. So, this is just a resolution table I use the word resolution right. So, the top level resolution is called resolution 4 which is a full factorial experiment right. So, what it says is if you um, uh, the, the, the factor and the, the column assignments right. So, A will be in column 1 if it is an L8 and D will be in column 7 if it is an L8 ok. So, it keeps going like that. So, take this particular case. So, uh, all uh, main effects and all interactions can be estimated that is called your highest resolution experiment. For instance, if you take an L 16 ok, if it is resolution number is 4 then what happens is factor 1 to 4 number of levels is 2 you remember right 2 raised to 4 that is what is this. But then my resolution is 3 what does that mean? 
all the main factors and two factor interactions can be estimated all the main effects and two factor interactions are unconfounded that is important ok. So, 2 raised to 5 is how much 32 half of that is 30 sorry uh, is 16. So, L 16 I am taking. So, what it says is if you are taking A, B, C, D and E ok. So, these are single factors main factors it is called. So, 5 then A, B, A, C, A, D, A 4 then 3, 7, then 2, 9, 10, so 15. So, you will get all the factors, the two factor interactions like A, B, A, C, A, D, A, E, B, C, B, D, B, C, D, C, D, right. So, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 10 plus 5 is 15. So, 15 columns. Uh, 15 columns and then 15 factors you are uh, taking this into account. So, it is done. The next one is uh, if, but however, if you wanted to have A, B, C, uh, A, B, D, A, B, E and all that then you cannot, you cannot use this particular stuff. So, if all the main factors and two factor interactions unconfounded that is important then it is called level 3 what is level 2 all main factors and groups of two factor interactions when you say groups of two factors two factor all main fa uh, all main effects are unconfounded with two factor interactions two factor interactions could be confounded so this is what we saw so this is what we saw the two factor interactions could be confounded whereas the individual factors are not confounded okay this is what we are looking at resolution code 1 means only main factors are there only main factors can be estimated main effects are all confounded with any other interactions low resolution ok. I mean you can just say I mean there is no meaning of uh, interact uh, factors being uh, interactions being confounded with. For instance if you take this particular case we can say in 7 this is confounded with this this is confounded yeah true, but then you get the same uh, factor combination ok multiple times fine uh, with this I will wrap up today's lecture ok thank you.